at least move towards the first down marker, get a little bit of better field position for wide receivers. Wide looks to his left, immediately throws, hits number 23. He's taken down. That's Kalen Briggs, his seventh catch of the, se of the season so far. It's going to bring up fourth down. Possibly. It looks like the referees are deliberating a little bit. The one close to us wants to give it to him, and it looks like they're going to get the first down. And they do get the first down, so right down at that marker. Decided not to go with the chains this time. Just giving him the first the first down outright. So first and 10, 6.30 and running. The snap, hands it off, and counters outside, but still no room in the backfield brought down. This time, Kalen Briggs trying to run that. A bit of a different look this time. Williamson with blockers on either side of him. Give it to either guy. Shane Gardner, his fifth tackle for loss of the season. The same look, this time moves Briggs outside. A flag, false start on the motion. So that'll be the first penalty of the night. Back him up five yards, second and 18. Play clock running now, game clock running as well. Bulldogs leading this one, 7-0. Man in motion in the backfield, hands it off to the running back, takes it up the middle, gain of a couple. Third and about 15 or 16. So the Bulldogs seemingly having an answer for the run tonight from the Pirates. Though we have seen a couple of completed passes. And now Williamson is alone in the backfield with five wide receivers wide. And now the snap looks out to his left side. It's a deep ball over his head, and it's a beautiful wow. catch taken down around the 50-yard line. A huge pickup. And a beautiful catch by Kalen Briggs, I believe. And that ball was right on the money. Great job of tracking it by the wide receiver. Turns around at just the perfect moment and makes that jump to get over the corner. I mean, you can't discount anything that happened there. That quarterback just threw that ball 35 through the air and put it right where it needed to be. That is the kind of... That's the only the kind of thing that comes from good practice and dedication. You know that these guys were working on that communication between the quarterback and receivers all week in order to make that happen, and probably even before last week. And now it looks like a personal foul. It's going to back up the Bulldogs 15, or it's going to advance the Pirates another 15 yards. They're going to start around the 35, a real opportunity now for the Pirates. The same look with five wide receivers wide, three right, another throw and batted down by number 10, Blake Elliott. And a great job of getting in there. That was likely desperation as that would have been a completed pass for another pickup of a first down. Now, Sue, we saw this with East Knox last week, Bryce, where last week their Centerberg kept trying to run the ball and they weren't really getting much on it. And then their defense was able to bust through and pressure the quarterback and they were forcing rush throws. But the passing game was still working for Centerberg. East Knox's defense has really been really great at run stopping, but not so great at stopping the pass. And so another throw to that slot receiver, number one, takes it towards a 30-yard line, a pickup of about five. That's Wyatt Denny, the running back, ended up picking up that 
pass. So gain of five, third in about five. We saw them pick up as much as 11 and even 15 earlier. Likely not the scenarios they want to be in, but they were able to salvage it all the same, and they're in great position to perhaps get a score against these Bulldogs. So three wide receivers right, two linebackers for the Bulldogs, throws out towards the left side. Number 15, Dennett Garrison picks it up. He jukes out, heading towards the middle, and he is going to pick up the first down and more on the 21-yard line. The Pirates breathing down the neck of the Bulldogs' red zone. Jackson Lester with the tackle. In this shotgun formation seemingly working for the Pirates. They're, they've gone with it on the last four plays. Three wide receivers left this time. He looks out towards his right, rolls out. There's pressure, jukes a bit. Now he finds room. He's into the secondary, brought down perhaps a bit before the line of scrimmage. Linebacker is doing a good job of collapsing and not allowing that to get out of hand. Blake Elliott with the tackle. He's approaching 60 tackles already on the season. We're in our fifth game of the year. Man, the fact that you said fifth game of the year makes me kind of sad because that means we're halfway through the season. Right, halfway through. And now a handoff to Denny, finds a hole and wrapped up around his shoulder pad on the jersey. Would have been through, likely towards the end zone approaching the 10-yard line, but now... The Pirates officially in Bulldog territory. The Bulldog red zone, I'm sorry, on the 17-yard line, third and six, 225 and running. Another look with Denny behind him. We saw a couple of run plays out of this formation. It is another. No, it's a pass. Flips it out to number 15. Again, that's Dennett Garrison. He's been tough to bring down tonight. Maybe a gain of one or two. And fourth down on the 16-yard line. Thirty-one yard field goal if attempted. So they're just gonna go back to the offense on fourth and seven. A big position for the Pirates. Gotta answer. The snap looks out to his right. Being pursued on the ground and it's no good. Incomplete. And so a big opportunity loss for the Pirates looking for that wide receiver, and when the pass was made, he had slipped and was on the ground. So the Bulldogs taking over on the 16-yard line, their own 16. It's always a shame seeing something like that happen. The communication was there. Everything was exactly where it needed to be, except that one unfortunate slip. And now with Lester, he takes it himself to the right side and he's quick, bust through for a couple of yards. A gain of about, about, eight uh, yards. about eight yards, seven or eight yards. So second and three. Now with two wide receivers left, They've really liked the run so far tonight. It's been working for them. This time hands it off to Aaron White, I believe. He barrels down the field, crosses the 35, and brought down around the 36-yard line. So a first down. They're sixth of the night. Man, if, e if East Knox does nothing else well, the one thing that they have is patient ball carriers that are able to follow their blocks. That block following is so – it's just such a necessary part of any run game. 
and finds a hole brought down. The Pirates thought maybe it might have been a fumble brought down by Wyatt Denny, but he was clearly down. So second and about three. And getting a lot more looks now from Aaron White. It's been all Blake Elliott so far, but mixing it up a bit in that style with a bit more power. That's the end of the first quarter. The Bulldogs leading the 7-0 over the Cardington Pirates. We've got a lot more live football action here in Howard, Ohio. Second quarter coming up next. Are you ready for the comeback? An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The Pub Kitchen and Tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the Pub Kitchen and Tap has something for everyone. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington. The Bulldogs now on the 43-yard line, their own 43, looks to pass. Oh. Absolutely drilled as he throws. It's going to be incomplete. That was number 59, Caden Guilum. Absolutely hammered on that. Luckily, the ball did move forward. He had an intended receiver to get rid of that. A bit what? blindsided on the hit. Looked like Lester. Lester was very fortunate that he started passing when he did. It looked like he was a little slow to get up, but obviously didn't affect him too much. And a handoff to White runs towards the middle, trying to strip it there. Number 16, Isaiah Ward trying to get in, pick up that forced fumble, but no luck. On the 44-yard line, it's a fourth and three scenario. Now, a little stroke of genius that I noticed by the East Knox coach, he decided to kick away from where the sun was setting, so that way his players would not have to contend with the sun. Very smart play, letting Cardington face into the sun. Interesting, and you know, part of that home field advantage is really understanding what your advantages and weaknesses are. The first down picked up on that fourth and three, a big conversion. The seventh first down of the half for the Bulldogs. Now some decision-making. Bulldogs with Wingard and Davis on his left. Lester with Elliott again in the backfield, looks towards his left, finds the tight end. Fryer householder and splits out towards his left. He's a big boy, pounding through a couple of receivers, finally brought down at the 30, a pickup of about 17 by householder. We've seen Householder before in other sports. I believe he was my player of the game during the baseball season where he hit a home run. Now Lester with Elliott in the backfield. Man in motion, hands it off to Elliott, rolls out towards his left and is brought down around the line of scrimmage. Elliot, your ball Second and 10. So far this drive, we've seen all runs. We saw them mix it up earlier. A couple of slot passes to Brayson Davis. 
And I think that we can definitely look for those to return after they went so well in the first drive because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. And if they're catching on to the run, you throw in a pass. And Lester takes it himself, a design QB run, tries to sneak outside but wrapped up around the knees and brought down by Warren Garrison, six-foot junior. So now third and six. Last time it was fourth and three. We'll see if they can pick up a couple of yards and perhaps the fourth or third down conversion. Wide receiver is left this time. Householder in motion in the backfield. B Pirates with three linebackers. Tries to stop him at the line, but he breaks forward for a pickup of a couple. Maybe a gain of three or four. And so another fourth and three. Bulldogs don't seem to be nervous in these fourth down situations. They've continued to push that scrum forward and pick up the necessary yard yardage to convert. Now an audible being called. Ten seconds left on the play clock. Householder again in motion, looks out towards his left, looking for Householder, but instead finds Davis and tackled and brought down around the 15 along that left sideline. Another first down. The Bulldogs have been able to pull it out when they need it. So on the 14-yard line in Pirate Red Zone. I'll tell you what, something that's really great to have is re reliable receivers, and Brayson Davis is really showing just how reliable he is, going three for three on target so far tonight. And the handoff to Elliott follows the blocker to the right side and a hard hit. Number 12, Warren Garrison, and he is down. And he went in head first. Really slow to get up, and there's a trainer. He's trying. He's obviously in pain. And quick onto the field. And that was a hard hit, but Garrison did go in with his head up. It's just always a dangerous situation involving the neck. We're going to take a break. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza's Salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington on the OH report. Number 12 uh, for the Pirates. Warren Garrison was able to get up on his own two feet and is walking over along the sideline. So that's good news. Pick up of a couple for the Bulldogs. Going to bring up third down. Now the Bulldogs really want to make sure that they get this right. They've been very efficient in third down and fourth down situations, but if you can pick up the yards now, why not do so on the eight-yard line, third and four. Wingard all the way wide left. Householder again in motion in the backfield. Lester takes it himself and tries to place it for a couple of extra yards, but not going to be spotted there. Pickup of about two. So fourth and one on the six-yard line. A tense situation for the Bulldogs as they look to extend their lead. 
to two touchdowns. Now the snap, handoff to Elliott, and beat outside, but breaks the tackle, and a touchdown into the corner. So the Bulldogs take the lead 14-0 on another Blake Elliott touchdown run in the last two games. That's the fourth we've seen from him. And honestly, once again, you see, I've, I'm going to sound like a broken record tonight probably, but you are seeing these ball carriers being patient, following their blockers, waiting for those blocks to develop and get set, and that is why we are seeing such success from the East Knox run game. That's why we saw the them succeed with it last week, and I think that's going to be a trend that we'll continue to see with East Knox is just that successful running game. Now offsides on the Pirates, not – much harm there as they'll move up a yard. So kicking team staying on. The kick is up and it's blocked. Oh wow. Right there at the line. Pirates pick it up. The field goal no good, but the Bulldogs leading this one 13-0. You're watching high school football live and free on the OH Report. An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the Pub Kitchen and Tap has something for everyone. Yeah, it's the comeback. Are you ready for the comeback? Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington, live for the OH Report here in Howard, Ohio. Bulldogs leading this one 13-0 as Elliott picks up his second rushing touchdown of the night. Despite the score, we have seen the Pirates putting up somewhat of a fight, forcing the Bulldogs on several occasions to third and fourth down, but unable to seal the deal. Pirates got all the way to the eight. This one kicked off, recovered around the 10-yard line and brought down around the 20 on a hard hit. Looked like he ran into his own man there. Kalen Briggs returning that one. About a 10-yard pickup on the return. Warren Garrison still on the sideline walking things off, talking with that trainer over there. We're very happy that he's okay. That was a difficult hit. Now the Pirates with the blocker on either side of him. Williamson, two wide receivers right, snaps it, hands it off, and immediately stopped off the handoff. The outside linebackers doing a great job of closing in. I believe that was Shane Gardner. Devin Garrett, I'm sorry with the tackle. Garrett is a senior, and get this, he's six foot eight, 310 pounds. Now the Pirates operating out of the shotgun again with five wide receivers wide. We've seen some success for them so far, confusing the Bulldog defense with all of those receivers, but instead finds, pulls someone to the backfield, the throw completed in the backfield, and he's taken down at the legs, a bit of a tabletop. Now Brayson Davis has been lights out as a receiver so far tonight with the tackle now. Wyatt Denny brought down in the backfield, third and 13. Two wide receivers left, three wide right. 
three, four cornerbacks in for the Bulldogs right now. Quarterback peels out towards his left, can't find anybody. It's gonna be a huge sack. Devin Garrett again finally seals the deal and puts him down for a huge loss. The Pirates on their own five yard line as they bring on the punt team. Fantastic, fantastic job by the Bulldogs there. De you could tell you just by looking at how quick East Knox broke through, they just overwhelmed that line. They brought more guys than the line was ready to defend against, and that's what led to that sack. Now the snap on the punt in their own end zone, a pretty good punt, and it's going to be – it's going to go out of bounds around the 45. So the Bulldogs will begin in pirate territory – Successful drive last time. They took over around the eight, I believe, and drove it all the way down the field, eventually ending in a Blake Elliott touchdown. Well, if you're the Bulldogs, you're going to absolutely love this because now that just means that your offense has less of field to cover. They're going to stay fresh for a little bit longer. If you're Cardington, though, you really need to figure out how to kick your defense into overdrive And here. a deep throw from Jackson Lester to Wingard, and he completes it. There was some contact from the cornerback who sh shook things up a bit, but able to retain it clean all the way into the end zone. Another quick score for the Bulldogs. They lead this 19-0 to zero with four minutes left in the second quarter. After the blocked field goal, doing a better job hopefully of blocking so they can get this one up. Quick on the corner, but this one goes through. 20 to zero is the score now as the Bulldogs taking an even further lead over the Pirates. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington live with the OH Report taking a look at the replay of that beautiful 45-yard touchdown pass from Lester to Wingard, I believe. Win yes, number nine, Caden Wingard doing a great job of staying with that ball through the contact with the corner and just scoots into the end zone. Now the kick is up and returned, picked up around the five yard line, looks to roll out and stuffed around the 20 and that's where the Pirates will begin. Time for us to see once again this Carrington offense and it's really important right now. You have to figure out if you're Cardington, how you are going to keep Devin Garrett out of your backfield. He's a big guy, 6'8", 310 pounds, and a senior nonetheless. So that size with his experience, you got to figure out how to keep him out. But then once you figure that out, you then have to figure out how you are going to keep Blake Elliott out of their backfield as well because he's been just as deadly. And a pass to number 23, Kalen Briggs, drilled trying to roll towards the middle. Gain of about one. These quick passes, we're seeing Garrett penetrate every single time. The purpose of that nose guard there is to dominate both gaps, and he's certainly doing so. Two wide receivers left, two wide receivers right. Running back in the backfield, Williamson snaps it, a handoff. The hole collapses before it even begins. 
brought down around the 20, so maybe a gain of about one. So third and nine now. So the Bulldogs with the two safety look. Likely guessing pass from the Pirates and it is a pass. A throw towards the sideline and intercepted by the Bulldogs. That's number three, Will Jensen with the pickup. Now you love to see that if you are East Knox. Your defense kicking in, putting in just as much effort as your offense. Great call and Kalen Briggs, the intended receiver there, would have been a beautiful catch if completed, but the ball just a bit short. And now Lester will take over again with Elliott in the backfield. Householder, we've seen him in motion in the backfield a lot. Lester looks to pass. Finds Davis in the middle, breaks a tackle, rolls out towards the left side. He's breaking loose and he's brought down around the two yard line. There is a flag on the play though. A huge pickup from Brayson Davis on that pass. Did a great job of picking up his own yardage after the catch as well. And a penalty on the offense. I didn't recognize what that uh, signal was that the referee gave. Ooh, a block in the back. Oof. Never, you never like to see that. You, you always teach your guys to block them in the front. You get in front of them, you get on their shoulder pads, and that's where you keep your hands. And now Lester rolls out, finds Householder, dips outside on the juke, fights all the way to the eight yard line. Another first down. The 11th first down of the first half for the Bulldogs alone. Now first and goal, threatened to score for a fourth time against this Pirate defense. Lester the snap, flips it outside. Davis barely catches it on his fingertips and he scoots all the way into the end zone for another touchdown. 26 to zero. The Bulldogs are running away with this one. So another PAT opportunity for the Bulldogs to make it 27. Three successful so far, or two successful so far tonight. One blocked. The kick is up, another blocked one. Pirates doing a good job of getting their hands up on that low kick, but the Bulldogs leading this one 26 to zero going into the end of the second quarter. You're watching high school football live and free on the OH Report. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Are you ready for the comeback? 
Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington, Howard, Ohio, East Knox taking on the Pirates. They took a 26-0 lead on that last drive. A minute 30 left in the second quarter. The Pirates receiving, taken down around the 19-yard line. Man, there's really not a whole lot to say. I know that I, I feel like I might be a little quiet right now, but there's really not too much to say. Cardington just needs to figure out what to do against this East Knox defense because the pass, the run wasn't working, the pass was working, but then last drive, East Knox took the pass away. So now you need to figure out what East Knox is up to and what you need to change if you're Cardington. Taking a look at some other scores around the area. Ontario is leading Clearfort 27-0 in the second quarter. Winford leading Bucyrus 14-7 in the second. Loudenburg and Centerburg. Centerburg leading this one 21-0. Danville in Northmore. Danville leading this one 14-7 over the Golden Knights. Chippewa and Hillsdale. Hillsdale leading 19 to zero over Chippewa in the second quarter. We are covering each and every one of those games live right now on the OH Report. A total of seven different broadcasts bringing you all the area action. A completed pass to number 15, Denton Garrison. Really, when you're down so much, you're really looking for that light, the guy who's not willing to quit, the one who's still fighting, and I think we're still getting an essence. We're seeing some of that from the Pirates right now. They continue to rally in this low clock situation. And flag on the play, false start on the Pirates. And right after they got back those yards that they just lost from the delay game. And this just in with seven different games. Our producer has aged approximately 15 years in the span of a few hours. Really putting him to work tonight. Second and eight for the Pirates. On their own 16 yard line. Now Williamson alone in the backfield looks towards the right. Pressure's there, shakes the rusher, throws towards his right side, number seven. He gets pushed all the way back towards the line of scrimmage. Might get some forward progress. Greg Donaldson with the catch. Right now, as the Carrington coach, this is where you are. So thankful for that forward progression rule. And I believe that was Tayden. Brayson Davis actually with the tackle. And now a timeout for the Pirates. Likely looking to salvage something out of this first half to perhaps get them some energy going back into the locker room. It would take a lot to do so, about 83 yards to get all the way downfield. No, we do only have 40 seconds left in this half and halftime is the time to make adjustments for both teams address things that aren't going well address the things that are going well letting your players know what to what they need to keep doing what they need to change what do you think are some changes that cardington is going to have to make now we will see on third and seven 40 seconds, Cardington, both sides actually with only two timeouts left. The snap looks to his left and catches it and ends up handing it off to a man in the backfield, jumps over a blocker and I believe crosses the first down line, an interesting play. Yeah, trick plays like that are interesting. Like uh, that looked so designed and I believe that it was. If not, that was a great heads up play by our receiver there. 
But trick plays like that, you usually only see those come out in the fourth quarter. So seeing it here in the second, it's a little interesting. And now a deep throw over the middle. Almost picked off again. Intended receiver Wyatt Denny tried to catch him on the shoulder, over the shoulder on that catch, but broken up by the men in the backfield. It's almost halftime in the Lucas and Crestview game. Lucas leading Crestview 7-6. That, those are the scores for all seven games that are live on the OH Report broadcast tonight, both on our YouTube and Facebook pages. Cardington uses another timeout. Eight seconds left in the second quarter. At halftime... We're going to bring you both bands live, both sound and video. So we will be playing through the live stream, no commercial break, while we watch the band. I definitely love watching the band, being in the band myself for two years in high school as well as being in college band. Honestly, even as a little kid, I never went to high school football games for the actual football game. I always went for <laughs> halftime show, and that is the honest truth. That's interesting, and with three wide receivers right, likely one of the last plays of this drive that we'll see. Williamson, a deep ball just into Bulldogs. Only three Bulldogs all the way around. Jackson Lester picks it up. He's speedy and juking out some of these offensive players for the Bulldogs, and they will fight finally deal the final blow. So after the interception, the Bulldogs leading this 26 to zero over the Cardington Pirates here in Howard, Ohio. Very, very one-sided. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington on the OH Report. We're bringing you the bands live and we will bring the crown, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, halftime show in stats momentarily. We'll see you then. Are you ready for the comeback? An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection, both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you wanna catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the Pub Kitchen and Tap has something for everyone. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Randy Moss. What? Dan Marino? You are right? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? Still got it. 22. 22. Can we again? Number 13. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. I need that senior discount. That's, that's the case. Mr. Marino, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> 
Fun retirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the Always Report.
An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection, of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the pub, kitchen, and tap has something for everyone. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939, headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Randy Moss. What? Dan Marino? You are right? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? Still got it. 22. 22. Do it again. Number 13. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. I need that senior discount. That's, that's the game. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Arrington, OH Report here, live with the Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Halftime Show. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be live and free. Knox Public Health, Knox Community Hospital in the community, for the community. Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, come see how we are pancaking the competition. Killbuck Savings Bank, community banking, it's what we do, it's who we are every single day offering a in Mazza's restaurant, offering a handmade, homemade spin on an old Italian classics, original family recipes, and features the famous Mazza salad, and the pub, kitchen, and tap, awesome food and drinks in Howard by the Mazza's brothers, featuring a gastro spin on regional favorites. Now for halftime stats, and very one-sided so far. East Knox, 122 passing yards and 87 rushing yards for a total of 209. 11 first downs in this first half for the Bulldogs. One penalty, 15 yards, and no turnovers. Cardington, 55 passing yards, and get this, only two rushing yards going into the second half here for the Pirates. Total of 57 yards, five first downs, three penalties, 11 total yards 
on those penalties and three t turnovers, one on downs and two on the interception. And coming back up now, the Bulldogs kicking away to the Pirates. 26 to zero in favor of the Bulldogs and we are underway for this second half. And picked up around the 10 yard line, pick up of about 15, brought down around the 25. Now let me just say that I for one am excited because as I said right before halftime, halftime is the time to make adjustments. So we're gonna get to see possibly almost an entirely new Cardington team come out because of the adjustments that they made at halftime because what they were doing in the first half clearly was not working as evidenced by the scoreboard. Great point. And now the first drive of the Pirates, or the first play of the Pirates drive, you saw some success out of the pass so far, but also two interceptions and a handoff inside to Wyatt Denny crosses the line of scrimmage, but not much more. It'll be second down. Blake Elliott, another tackle. Elliott approaching 60 tackles on the season so far. Unbelievable number considering we're in week five. Now Williamson snaps it, looks to his left, finds number seven, but he's hit as he catches. He's hit hard by number three, Will Jensen, breaking things up. It was number seven, Greg Donaldson. Got blindsided a bit in the back. Seeing Donaldson getting his hand nursed a little bit by his quarterback, Le Jackson Lester. Looks like maybe he might have just smacked it a little too hard or got his finger caught in a face mask or something. Yeah. Always good to see teammates looking out for each other, though. Absolutely. And now Williamson with Denny behind him. He's got two wide receivers on his left. Three now on his left. Looks out towards his left. Finds number 15, Denton Garrison. Breaks a tackle. Looks towards the middle. Continues running. Number 55 for some reason. Holding up. Looks like he likely would have had an angle at that tackle. That was Alex Dolby just kind of let the guy go right by him and pick up a few more. All the same, it's a first down for the Pirates. Now a little bit more light, a little bit more life perhaps out of the Pirates. A little bit more energy as they're moving this ball forward at pretty good pace. Dolby on the sidelines now. Maybe that was an injury or pulled a muscle or something. Now, I think we're going to start to see a lot more passing out of Carrington because that, that was what was working for him in the first half, but they kept trying the long game, just long bomb after long bomb, and that ended up getting them two interceptions. And despite being in the nickel, there was trouble for the Pirates brought down in the backfield by number 10, Blake Elliott, with a huge sack. So now second and 14 after the sack. Second sack of the night so far for the Bulldogs. Look out to his right where he has three receivers. Tries to find Denton Garrison again, but slips through his fingers as he was likely expecting contact on his back as he did earlier a few plays ago. You can't get nervous as a receiver. Otherwise, you're always going to see stuff like that happening. Just drop balls, stuff like that, because you're going to get so concerned with the guy coming up behind you that you're going to start turning before you have the ball caught, and that is the very deadly part, and that will absolutely kill your offensive run is if your, receiver, is if your receivers are too concerned with getting turned downfield. Williamson out of the shotgun, it's going to be a delay of game penalty. So that'll back up the Pirates. 
another five yards, or maybe it was a timeout perhaps. It was a delay of game and Oh uh, no, they're waving off the flag. It, the Carnington did get get a time out off. So they did manage to get a time off or a timeout off in time, so will not back them up even further. That would have made it a third and nineteen, but instead still just as manage unmanageable, third and fourteen. We have seen the Pirates get out of this earlier where they found receivers. It looks like they're going back to that shotgun with the five wide receivers outside. I mean, can you blame them? It seems to be working for them. Uh, well, outside of the two interceptions, of course. Correct. And we have seen, even though the Bulldogs anticipating this, operating largely out of the nickel, still getting pressure. Now going back to that three lineman set. And five wide receivers out of the shotgun. Williamson, the snap, looks towards his right, looks towards the middle. Wide receiver slips him, catches it. That's number seven, Greg Donaldson, for a huge pickup. It will be a first down. They started on their own 35. They will start now on the Bulldog 30. And so a 60-yard pass all the way downfield. Now the Pirates in Bulldog territory breathing down in the neck of their red zone. So first and 10, four wide receivers to his right. Williamson, one wide receiver to his left, alone in the backfield, looks towards his right, a quick pass. Through a bunch of receivers and corners, the intended receiver was, again, Denton Garrison, but incomplete. It's going to bring up second down. We're seeing a lot more. Something that we didn't see a lot out of Cardington is these quick-hitting short passes. We didn't see them do that a lot in the first. All of their passes really were a lot of long bombs. But here in the second half, we're seeing Cardington come out really taking advantage of the separation that the receivers can get. And we're seeing a lot more quick hitting passes, which I like. Very true. We have seen a lot of long balls. Williamson with pressure on his back looks for Denton Garrison once again. A complete pass inside the five. Sorry, Greg Donaldson on the catch this time. Now first and goal on the four yard line. The Pirates hoping to get something going. They think if the Bulldogs score 26 in the first, they could do the same themselves with 8.45 left in the third quarter. A run by Denny brought down around the two or the three yard line. So they will inch closer towards that goal line. The closest that they've gotten so far tonight to the end zone is the eight-yard line where it ended up being a turnover on downs for the Pirates. Now with Williamson, Denny behind him, two wide receivers on either side. A handoff to Denny, runs right into the line and stopped. Maybe a pickup of one or two. Now, see, I can't really fault Denny much on that because there was a small gap there, and I bet he was thinking, I can fit through that, and he charged straight into the small gap that was there, just sealed up as soon as he got there. So I can't really fault Wyatt Denny for trying to make that happen there. And some noise now, third and two. The snap from Williamson, another handoff, pushes through the line, and he's going to be stopped once again. That brings up fourth down. A whole bunch of tacklers that time. So fourth and two, ball on the two-yard line. It would be heartbreaking for the Pirates to get stopped right at the goal line, but it is fourth down. 
This crowd coming to life as they want to keep the clean sheet shutout. Five on the play clock. The snap rolls out to his left. It's a pass. It, under pressure, in trouble, trying to navigate these guys. Stays on his feet. Approaches the goal line. He's down. The ball came out. Very likely rolled down. But the referee rolls it a touchdown. They say he did cross the goal line. And now some discussion from the referees. And they say it is a touchdown, so the Cardington Pirates will pick up their first touchdown of the night. A two-yard touchdown run from Wyatt Denny. And the Bulldogs crowd not happy about this one as they thought he was stopped short. And instead, they will rule it short. And so, so close, and he was, he was sitting on the goal line. It looks like the referees don't have the luxury of seeing this, but he did cross the goal line. But the ball did not. He had it in his possession. It's questionable whether or not the ball in his possession would have crossed the goal line, but he was sitting on top of that goal line by a good foot or so. Now, see, he did fumble the ball right there at the end of the play. I saw him whip his arm around and try and reach out and get the ball across, which was the problem. Yeah, he swung it. As our producer Adam is telling me in the booth, he there was a guy laying down right in front of him, and when he swung his arm back, he was not expecting it, and the ball just fell out of his hand. If it weren't for that body on the ground, Cardington would have six right now. Like, you know, we don't have the luxury of having that million dollar studios for our referees, but, you know, despite that, I still think that was very close. I think he might have scored a touchdown, but the active ruling on the play is that is a turnover on downs. The Bulldogs take over on the one yard line. Looks like there's a heated discussion going on from between two referees and Cardington's coach right now over at around the 10 yard line. Just trying to get some clarification or I he can't really challenge because like you said, we don't have the luxury of the refs having And we're gonna take another look at this. I really think there that the tip of that ball might have crossed when he pulled it back before it was blocked. But instead, first and 10 on the one yard line, the Bulldogs trying to run it out and they do get it past the line of scrimmage, a pickup of about five, there's a flag in the backfield. A holding call against the Bulldogs, back them up about half a yard. Now it's time for us to see what changes Cardington has made on their defense we saw what the changes they made on their offense, and those look good. So now let's see if the defense can look just as good with those halftime adjustments. And I will say, this is the worst starting position that East Knox has been given tonight. So it's going to be interesting to see how both sides respond here after halftime. And so now, right there on that goal line, the last time we saw a turnover on downs against the Pirates, they were on their own eight. They ended up going on to score. Snap from Lester, tries to take it himself, stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And they are going to rule him, stop short of the safety right around the one or two yard line, bring up second down in about 10. That's dangerous. A quarterback sneak right up the middle that close to the goal line. Quarterback sneaks are great for if you're just trying to get one or two yards, and maybe that was their plan, trying to get Lester a little more breathing room. But that's so risky, having your quarterback try and sneak up the middle that close. And Lester hands it off outside to Blake Elliott. Blake Elliott busts a couple of tackles and takes it across the 10-yard line for a Bulldog first down. Ten yard carry. Bring up first down, the Bulldog. 
Now the Bulldogs on their own 11 do have that bit of breathing room that they were talking about. We'll see how they go forward with this drive. Two wide receivers left. Elliott on his left as well for protection. A quick audible. Two tight ends, Derek Field and Breyer Householder. Looks towards his left on the throw. It's a deep ball towards Wingard, but it's going to be too deep, incomplete. Now, really, it it just kind of looks like right now East Knox and Carnington are in a little bit of a match of anything you can do, I can do better. East Knox trying to get those long bombs down the field like they were seeing Cardington doing. And they were doing that last half as well. And Cardington trying to run the ball last half. And also both teams going for it on fourth down quite a bit. Just It seems like they're in a contest, just really butting heads with each other right now, which is really fun to watch in a football game. This one handed off to White, brought down for maybe a gain of a couple. And this game, despite the score, has been very fun to watch. A lot of big plays, even on both sides. A, a lot of there are a couple of really big passes that led to touchdowns. And even for the Pirates, I think it was a 45-yard touch or uh, just a pass, right? Right, right. And I mean, all I mean, how many deep passes have we seen connect for Cardington? We've seen two: one last half, one this half, and both of them were for 40 plus yards. And now Lester looks out towards his left, finds Wingard completed, crosses the first down marker, taken down around the 25. Bulldogs second first down of the second half. Looks like an injured Carrington player on this side of the field maybe, around the 35-yard line. Having at that ankle, I thought maybe he was tying his shoes for a second, but there will be a break in the action. Is limping a little bit on that ankle, talking to the trainer as he comes off. So both teams coming back to the line of scrimmage, the clock running. Here in the third quarter, the Bulldogs leading this one 26 to zero. Pirates stop short of a touchdown. A snap from Lester, fakes the handoff, looks to his left, tries to find Davis, ends up finding him. There's a flag in the backfield. Davis breaks a couple of tackles, pushed forward, brought down around the 48 yard line. There is a flag. They're going to rule this back, it looks like, in a hold. And so a great pickup would have given him another first down on the Brayson Davis catch. He's been quick and speedy, very agile, getting outside of these corners and safeties. Now first and 15. Second penalty of this drive for the Bulldogs. Now Lester with two wide receivers to his left. The snap looks out to his left. A quick throw to mm. Davis, but outside of his reach. Incomplete. So that's going to bring up second and 20. Man, it, it's not just the fact that there was a holding penalty. It's the fact of where it was really setting back East Knox here. They've overcome more. They overcame more a couple plays ago, yeah. if we're being completely honest. That referee in the backfield on top of that one right away. The flag was in the air before the ball even came out. A handoff to Elliott. Tries to bounce inside, hit and brought down, perhaps a gain of a few, maybe four or five. So now third and 15. Yeah. 
play being called. Third and 19 now, I'm sorry. Let's see, rework the scoreboard. Wide receiver left and right, Householder in motion, the snap. Looks out to his right, finds Householder all by himself. He is a truck running down the field. Brought down around the 28. Flag coming down from the Cardington sideline. And so another flag on the field. Might end up being another holding call. That would be a disastrous two holding calls within a few plays. Waving it off. And they will wave it off. So third and 16 from the line judge that came from the Cardington line judge. Fourth and 16 now. We'll see the punt squad householder back to punt. And this is the first time we've seen the special teams unit on anything aside from a kickoff for East Knox tonight. Good point. I believe that's Bryce Hartley back to receive. It is oh. Hartley. It's a high punt. It bounces around the 50-yard line where the Bulldogs jump on top of it. It's down to around the 45, and the Pirates will begin around their own 45, 231 left in the third quarter. Carrington going to be hoping to get a little bit more out of, their, out of this drive than the last one after it ended with a with – a, Near fumble on the one-yard line. And I'm sure that is going to be a very controversial call. Let us know at home what you think, if that was a touchdown or if they were stopped just short. Now, Ontario leading clear for 38-0 in the third quarter. The snap from Williamson looks out to his left, feels the pressure, rolls out to his right, has all the time in the world now, but flips towards the sideline, almost intercepted by Brayson Davis. Camden, Brayson Davis, I'm sorry. It was Bryce Hartley, the intended receiver. No, I will say, I was watching Cardington in the pregame during their warm-ups, and one of the things, I even actually noted it down here on my uh, sheet, is it... Their Cardington's quarterbacks look really good at throwing in the scramble or while they're in motion in the backfield running around, which it's hard to be accurate sometimes when you're moving around like that. So these quarterback, this quarterback, though, has been on the move quite a bit, and all of his throws have still been really almost dead on. And Winford... Leading to Cyrus 28 to seven in the third. Chippewa losing to Hillsdale 33 to zero. Outside, maybe a pickup of one. Not much of a gain. Donaldson with the completed pass. Derek Field with the tackle. It's gonna bring up third in about 10. Danville leading Northmore 20 to 7, Centerville Centerville leading Loudonville 21 to 15, and Lucas leading Crestview. All of these games are in the third quarter. The snap, Williamson alone in the backfield throws it to his left, finds a receiver. Ooh, I'm not sure about that one, ref. Wyatt Denny with the pickup. He, I'm not entirely sure that his knee touched down there. I'm not entirely sure that our runner was actually down. A good point. Perhaps something to look back at on the replay if he was really brought down. He tried to continue fighting for those yards. And so fourth and three, the Pirates alone in the backfield is Williamson, and it's tipped by Householder. And so another turnover on downs. The Pirates really struggling to string together 
some answers or some plays that could really get them back into this. Like we said, really they were stopped at the one yard line. Heartbreaking and a very, very close play, but you still have to maintain that energy. You have another quarter of play left and a whole minute left in this third. You can still continue to fight. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what happened between the two drives, but that looked like the Carrington team from the first half with the same kind of play calling and stuff like that. Mostly focusing on the pass once again, but I I don't understand why you would go back to doing something like the screens. Right, and with White has a healthy pickup there. And you are right about seeing a different Cardington team. You know, it's not so much the team that's trying to fight and claw back into this game. It's the team that's trying to stay in it, the team that's not trying to get scored on again. Definitely, definitely, because honestly, with Carrington halfway through the season, you want to minimize as much damage as you possibly can because you don't want to go into the second half feeling down about yourselves. Now the snap, a handoff to White, taken down around the 40-yard line. It will be a pickup on the second and one. They will get the first down, their third of the half. A flag is on the play, though. Conversation. We'll look for the signal. Personal foul. East Knox. Against East Knox. So these last two weeks, we have seen East Knox excel in their games and really blow teams out, but this has been a reoccurring problem where they do face a lot of personal foul penalties. I don't know if maybe they get a little confident, start mouthing off, uh, just an earshot of the ref, or I have I have no idea what's going on down there. Obviously, so it's really a wonder what it is. If it's unsportsmanlike conduct, if it's taunting, it very well could be taunting. Right, and now still some discussion as they explain to both sides what's happening here. First and ten. Bulldogs will start on their own 45. Returning back to our positions, 15 seconds left in the third quarter, so likely one of the last plays of this quarter. Bulldogs leading this one 26-0. So far we've seen two five-yard touchdown runs from Blake Elliott. He was our MVP player of the game last game. A 45-yard touchdown pass from Lester to Wingard. Brayson Davis with a 10-yard touchdown run. They're checking something around his face mask. It, it could be he's bleeding. Of course, with bloodborne illnesses, it is very serious when a player is bleeding. It's a priority to get them off of the field for the safety of all players. It looks like everybody's confused right now. Nobody. It doesn't seem like the personal foul has been actually given to the Carrington coach. It doesn't look like there's been really much explained. Maybe that's what he was... Maybe that was what the hold up was. He was trying to get an explanation. Okay, so a fake handoff. Lester takes it himself, touches the 50-yard line, continues to fight a pickup right around the 49-yard line, crossing into Cardington territory again. And that will bring an end to the third quarter. All Bulldogs all night long. They're leading this one 26-0 going into the fourth quarter. Stay tuned. We've got that coming up next. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. 
featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939, headlined by the famous matzah salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington, live on the OH Report. A quick pass there received by Parker Kimball, the backup tight end. Even after the tip as well, was tipped just out of the quarterback's hand and he was able to keep a track of it. And oh, good spot. So the Bulldogs checking their play wristbands. Two wide receivers right for Lester. Elliott with him in the backfield. Kimball in motion, looks out to his right, hit as he throws, and it looked like a fumble, but picked up by the Bulldogs. I think in the backfield, so that will be a loss. Referee did throw that downage marker, so that was ruled a fumble. Good job by the Bulldogs. Be quick and jump on top of that. Fourth and 15 now. Looks like on fourth and 15, we saw them punt earlier. It looks like they are going to go for it. In true East Knox fashion, as I've come to realize in the past couple weeks. They do love those fourth down conversion opportunities, but a timeout by East Knox. I mean, the fact of the matter is if you're East Knox, you have the, if you have the team that East Knox has, you have the size, you have the ability, and you have the, quite frankly, the play calling to make it on fourth down conversions. I, why wouldn't you? Definitely, and, you know, when you're up so much, it could just be likely practice and trying to convert in these big situations where you need a lot of yardage. Definitely, definitely. And the, honestly, I don't see much value in East Knox going for it, but then again, that's why I'm not a coach. Householder lining up on the line of scrimmage, so they will not be punting. They will be going for it. Lester with the wide receiver left. Householder in motion. The snap looks to his left, finds Householder, picks it up. Full head of steam downhill, finds Daylight running all the way down. And not only do they convert, they get the touchdown. There are two flags in the backfield, though. Right around the 30-yard line, two flags were thrown. If it stands, it'll be a 45-yard touchdown reception by Householder. And holding against the Bulldogs, so spoiling it, back them up even further. Fourth and 25 now. And now they will punt. Householder going back to kick the punt. Wyatt Denny back to receive. Looks like the referee's deliberating a little bit about where the ball should go. So Denny lining up around the 10 to receive this punt. Long snap to Householder. The punt is high and not very far, only about 20 yards straight down, rolls back, gets himself some extra yardage, but they will 
rule it down around the 20-yard line. That's where the Pirates will begin on their own 20. With 10 minutes left in this fourth quarter, they would love to just get some points on the board and have some energy going into these next couple of weeks. Now, see, what Carrington needs to do is they need to come out and they need to keep doing those 5 to 10-yard quick-hitting passes that they did in their first drive in the second half because that worked. They got all the way down to the one-yard line and then just tried to bust it in with running, which unfortunately didn't work. So they need to just do that again, get down the field, and then try it again. Now the snap, handoff to Denny, rolls out to his left side, sees a little bit of room, continues pushing forward, runs into his own blocker, brought down for a gain of about six. With the clock running, a second and five. Cardington on their own 25. Two timeouts left for each team. Again, a couple of scores in the first quarter, one, both by Elliott on touchdown runs and two scores in the second quarter. And the snap handoff to Denny once again and stuffed at the line, maybe a gain of one, but I doubt that. It looks like it looks like they're going to mark him down in about the same spot. So no gain on the play. Number 18, Shane Gardner with the stop. This crowd still very much into it for the Bulldogs. Knox County in general, rowdy your football crowd. The throw off to the left side, off the hands. Number 43 for the Pirates in looks like Will Jensen, the one it hit. Number 43, Austin Vales, was the intended receiver, just slipped through his hands. Brings up fourth down, fourth and about four. The referee will set things up. We are definitely seeing Carrington return back to more of those quick hitting five and ten yard passes. And it's fourth and short right now. So things are looking pretty good for Carrington in the moment. I don't think going for it here is either unexpected or bad. And now delay of game penalty. Some commotion at the line of scrimmage as well. Now fourth and about nine. Now the Pirates on their own 21. That's Wyatt Denny back to kick. Looking to get a look at the number of the punt returner on this one. Number four, Brayson Davis receives it around the 50-yard line, crosses the 40, and going to be taken down around the 35 around that left sideline. So with 8.31 left in the fourth, that's where the Bulldogs will begin. It's really interesting to see this. Cardington's defense adapted really, really well at halftime. Clearly the coach knew what was wrong, and they made the correct changes to make sure that they were successful at stopping East Knox. The question is, what can Cardington do now, this late in the game, to try and get some points up on the East Knox defense? Lester with Wingard to his left and Brayson Davis to his right. Wingard jumps off sides. So it'll be a false start on the Bulldogs that'll back them up about five. Now 
And I'll tell you what, I wish the people at home could hear Carrington's band. They sound phenomenal. I heard and that. And they are loud and clear from across the field. It was a beautiful solo, a handoff to Elliott. Finds a hole following his blockers, takes it all the way across the 30, a pickup of about 9 or 10. Taken down around the 29, 28. So second, second and six. Still energy out of that pirate sideline. We hear the band, but we also hear some of the rowdy fans. A handoff to Elliott rolls out to his right. Jukes, a tackler, tries to fight his way outside of that tackle, but taken down right around the 17. So that is a first down. Now what we're seeing here, it looks like East Knox might have finally figured out what Carrington was doing on defense. I think we might see another touchdown here. Indeed, the Bulldogs are in pirate territory. The snap, another handoff to Elliott, following a blocker number 51, taken down right around the 15-yard line. Aiden Riggle, the blocker he was following there, doing a good job blocking all night long. So in second and seven, we'll see what Bulldogs are looking at here. They have a wide receiver left and right. A fake handoff to Elliott. Lester takes it himself, rolls out, still in the backfield, but crosses. And going to be brought down inside the 10. Hits the back of his head a bit hard. But is quick to get up. Right around the 7 yard line. A pickup of about 8 or 9. That so it is a first down for the Bulldogs. They're inside the Pirates 10. They do threaten to score once more and put this game even further out of reach. In the snap, handoff to Elliott, rolls outside, wrapped up for behind, breaks two tackles, but makes it all the way into the end zone. So the lead extending even further now to 32 as there have been no answers from the Pirates so far. The Bulldogs on the clean sheet. Now, I've said it a lot in the first half, and I will say it again. Patience as a ball carrier is an absolute virtue, and what you saw there was Blake Elliott doing a really good job of being patient and following Alex Dolby and Caden Ridenauer, his two blockers there that really sealed off that hole for him and busted through to make a way for that touchdown. Linemen, unsung heroes of football, I'm telling you. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, it is hard to kind of recognize some of those smaller things that go on every single play that really establish the dominance for a team, the ability to rush the ball and break through that line, but on the other side of things, protecting the quarterback. And I don't think a lot of people realize just how strong you have to be as an offensive lineman. When you have a blitzing linebacker, linebackers being some of the most athletic people on a football field, the ability, the how strong you have to be to stop someone sprinting at you full force is you have to be so incredibly strong. So go on any offensive lineman that can hold back a blitzer. And Lester with the designed run will take it in for two. A huge block oh. by number 12. And they are going to call a flag. I believe it's for an unnecessary hit. It might be a block in the back as well. It looked like he was tumbling forward pretty hard. So that was Briar Householder dealing that hit. Looks like the umpire's getting a getting the decision. It is a block in the back against the Bulldogs. And so another 
personal foul penalty. And this is a mean Bulldog team. Both on offense and on defense, really priding themselves in sticking those hard hits. This time, just a little bit more ambitious. And they're going to go for two. This is a long two-point conversion, but we've seen East Knox score from this distance before. And at this point, when they were letting off the gas, it confuses me why they're starting to assert themselves again in this game. Maybe it's frustration between the coaches, but it doesn't seem like in this blowout, the Bulldogs are willing to let off the gas anymore. I don't necessarily know if it boils down to, you know, something going on between the coaches. I think maybe it's... Uh, you got to remember, this is East Knox's homecoming game. You want to go into school on Monday if you're East Knox feeling like you just won the Super Bowl. So you want to really just make sure that you are feeling the absolute greatest. You want to know just how well you did, and you want everybody else to know just how well you did. Good point, and... The PAT will be no good on the two-point conversion. With 6.55 left in the fourth, the Pirates making their way back onto the field to receive. Will Jensen kicking off for the Bulldogs. Denton Garrison and Greg Donaldson back to receive the kickoff. It's a long kick received by Garrison. Rolls towards his left, trying to follow those blockers, and rolls towards his right now. A bit of juice brought down inside their own 20-yard line. That's where the Pirates will begin their drive. 6.45 left in the fourth quarter, trailing this one by 32 points. Now, I will say, something I've been noticing that Cardington has done a lot on their kick returns. I'm seeing a lot of movement, of movement east to west instead of north and south, so to say. I mean, this field is built east to west, but we're seeing a lot of <laughs> lateral movement rather than movement down the field. Uh, definitely, definitely. And that has been a common theme is when the Pirates feel that pressure, they do sort of freeze up and look for another avenue to go towards rather than running downhill. Williamson hands it off to Denny. Brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Pirates on their own 17. Looks like they gave him a yard off that. And a flag now. After the play is over. And discussion between the referees into that mic. Unsportsmanlike against East Knox is the call for that flag. And so that will move Pirates forward. Good looking out there. Another 15-yard penalty. That's the fourth tonight for the Bulldogs. Now, like you said, we saw this also last week against Centerburg. Their personal fouls coming in uh, I believe we after saw a the chop plays. Block. We did see a chop block last week against Centerburg. But really just East Knox, they get ahead, and then they start getting cocky, and then they start getting careless, it seems like. So now Williamson, the snap, looks to hand it off. Instead, looking to throw a poor pass over to his right side on the run. Greg Donaldson, the intended receiver, both corners collapsing on that play quickly. Nothing doing. Absolute great job by Logan Fridley. There, or, I'm sorry, wrong side. Uh, Alex Dolby on the pursuit there of Journey Williamson forcing that bad throw. So with the Bulldogs up 32 to zero, we do have a running clock. No. 
And now the snap looking out to his left to pass a deep ball, and it's going to be short and about 15 feet offline. So incomplete. So what do you think that was? Miscommunication, bad pass, or good coverage? Because there was nobody in the vicinity of where that ball hit. I mean, it looked like he had that intended receiver. It looked like it might have slipped out of his hands a little bit, or was he tried to put too much on that ball and didn't necessarily get the best spiral out of it. But mm -hmm. you're right, it wasn't anywhere near the intended receiver. Now the snap looks to his left, a quick pass, number 15, oh. absolutely pummeled as he tries to catch it, and there's a flag right on it. I think they're going to call him for another personal foul. If it's not, it's definitely at least a P.I. I think it's a hit on a defenseless receiver is what it's going to be. And that receiver trying to make a play on the ball had no idea where the tackler was. Yep, definitely a moving the chains forward. I think it's definitely going to be an unnecessary roughness call. And so the fifth 15-yard penalty for the Bulldogs tonight, the personal fouls, and a quick pass over to the right side, a little hitch route. He takes it across the 50 into Bulldog territory. So Donaldson with a five-yard pickup is going to bring up second and five. Ball on the Bulldog 46. These penalties have awoken this Bulldog crowd. Beginning to lull a bit in the victory. Now, Denny takes it forward. Brought down by a couple of guys, number 10, number 14, number 18. In the fourth quarter, Winford's leading Bucyrus 41 to 14. Northmore is making a comeback. Danville leading them 28 to 21, just a one touchdown game. Centerburg leading Loudonville 34 to 14. All of these games in the fourth quarter. So with a running clock, 2 minutes, 45 seconds. And not to mention all those games live and free on the OH Report. Absolutely. All of those are available. A deep pass to number 7 just oh. out of his fingertips. He would have been all the way through for the touchdown. The intended receiver, Greg Donaldson, on the deep pass. It was a bit of a basket over the shoulder catch. A little bit of good sportsmanship given a fist bump to a receiver. A little bit of good sportsmanship from Caden Wengard. Fist bumping that receiver. So two minutes on the running clock. And a good point that Wingard did give him that props for burning him on that route. Cardington with three seconds on the play clock. Looks out to the left, finds Garrison again and tackles him in the backfield. And another turnover on downs for Cardington. Absolutely great play calling defensively from East Knox there to make sure that that play got nowhere. The play got off, but it was the receiver was just met too quick to make a play out of it. So now with 148 left in the fourth quarter, Bulldogs will take over, likely just running out the clock here. Lester and Elliott. Lester with two wide receivers to his left. Householder in the tight end position. And the snap, a handoff to Elliott. He runs up the middle, brought down by the knees, crosses the 50 yard line, brought down around the Pirate 49. A bit of respect being shown, I think, from all the players towards each other. A minute 30 running winding down to the final few plays of this game. Looks like it will be a shutout. Bulldogs picking up this one, 32 to zero, moving to three and two on the season. The Pirates, it looks like it is a victory formation. It seems a little, seems like there might be a little too much time on the clock to 
be breaking out the QB Neal already. So 54 seconds in running left on the clock. So victory formation once again. 10 on the play clock, 30 on the game clock, and the kneel is taken. And so the kneel taken, both sides coming off. That is going to end the game with the clock expiring. 15 seconds left and handshakes being done. The Bulldogs picking up the big victory at home, 32 to zero. Moving to three and two on the season. Next up, they're gonna take on Mount Gilead at Mount Gilead on the 22nd. Cardington moving to one and four now. They'll be taking on Centerburg next at their versus Centerburg at Cardington. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington with the OH report. Up next, we've got the crown, or we've got the MVP player of the game will be named in that interview. So with that, we will see you in just a few minutes. Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington, you're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The Pub Kitchen and Tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the Pub Kitchen and Tap has something for everyone. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Randy Moss. What? Dan Marino? You're right. Hey, Grandpa. Grandpa? Still got it. 22. 22. Do it again. Number 13. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. I need that senior discount. That's, that's the case. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Bryce Coder with the OH Report here with the Knox Community Hospital MVP. Once again, it's Blake Elliott. Congrats and welcome back. Thank you. Blake had 94 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, a sack, and a whole handful of tackles tonight. When you woke up this morning, did you think it was going to be a special day coming into game day? I mean, I just wake up every day like how usually game game day, uh, wake up, go brush my teeth, and go to school and just try to get locked in for the game that night. And so something that we talk about often on the air is you're approaching 60 tackles on the season. We're in week five. Do you think that your ability as a linebacker, do you think any of it's informed by your ability as a running back? Do you think they kind of help and feed into each other? I mean, yeah, it does help. Uh, helps tremendously when it comes to reading where the running back's going to go and watching my guards and all that stuff. Definitely a season taking off for you guys so far, starting off one and two, but now you're three and two. How are you feeling about that? Uh, it feels pretty good, but not exactly where we want to be. I mean, we wish we could be four and one or five and L, but there's still a lot of season left to play, so we'll see what happens. A lot of magic left, right? Yep. Anyone you want to shout out? Uh, shout out to the offensive line once again. Uh, Alex Dolby, Lane Lashley, Peyton Finch, Caden uh, Reinauer, Aiden Riggle, and Jackson Lester, the quarterback. All right. Thanks so much, Blake Elliott, our Knox Community Hospital MVP player of the game. Congrats, Blake. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for the comeback? An icon is returning to the heart of Apple Valley. The pub, kitchen, and tap is back, and we do game day differently, offering a brand new patio, all new bar with a wide variety on tap, and plenty of big screen TVs to ensure you never miss the big play. Our menu has a diverse selection, of both food and drink, so there will always be plenty for the whole family to enjoy. Whether you want to catch the big game or just enjoy a night out with the family, the Pub Kitchen and Tap has something for everyone. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon offers Italian classics perfected for generations. Featuring house specialties enjoyed since the family opened its doors in 1939. Headlined by the famous Mazza salad, along with all new flavors and convenient features, like our Neapolitan-style pizzas and easy online ordering for both pickup and delivery. Visit Mazza's.com for weekly specials and make Mazza's your choice for a dining experience over 70 years in the making. Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Randy Moss. What? <laughs> Dan Marino? You are right? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? Still got it. 22. 22. To win a game, number 13. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. I need that senior discount. That's, that's the case. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Bryce Coder, Ike Arrington, live with the OH Report here for the Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram postgame show. We'd like to take a thank, second to thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be live and free. We'd like to thank Knox Public Health, Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, come see how we are pancaking the competition. Killbuck Savings Bank Community Banking. It's what we do. It's who we are every single day. Maz's Restaurant offering a homemade spin on old Italian classics, original family recipes, and featuring the famous Maza salad. Pub Kitchen and Tap, awesome food and drinks in Howard by the Maza's Brothers, featuring a gastro spin on regional favorites. Pretty one-sided game tonight with the Bulldogs picking up the victory 32 to 0. Let's take a quick look at the stats for tonight's games. The team stats so far. The Pirates with nine first downs in the game, 148 passing yards, only 16 rushing yards. That rush has been their bread and butter so far this year, but limited tonight, 164 total yards, five turnovers with three interceptions, four penalties and 20 penalty yards. The Bulldogs with 18 first downs, 152 passing yards, 169 rushing yards, 321 total yards, zero turnovers, seven penalties and 76 penalty yards. Getting a bit sloppy there at the end with four personal foul penalties in the fourth quarter. Like I said, a one-sided game tonight with the Bulldogs moving to three and two after the 32 to zero victory. They're, they will be taking on Mount Gilead next at Mount Gilead on 922. We will be covering that game. Cardington going on to face Centerburg at home in Cardington. Tonight we've got the Friday night picks in at 1130. Every Friday night we bring you the best roundup of all the football action. Friday night pigskin live here on the OH Report. I'd like to thank everyone for allowing this to be possible. I'd like to thank our director Adam Thompson and of course our camera operator Desmond Lawrence, Bryce Coder, and with me Ike Arrington. With that, we will say good night and see you next time.